Welcome. We're back in our studio today. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> it may be exciting uh, for me, perhaps, because I've been away on vacation for a couple of weeks, and it's always nice to get back to a regular routine. So I'm, I'm happy to welcome you, and a special welcome to those of you who are new to The Oldish. My name is Karen. I'm the publisher and editor of The Oldish, and you are invited to read our items on a daily basis at theoldish.com, follow us on our social platforms, we're everywhere, and of course join us every Wednesday at 12 noon, right here as you've done today. So in the past couple of weeks we have published a lot of articles on the Oldish, so I'm not going to go through all of them, I'll hit maybe some of the highlights, and you can go to theoldish.com if any of them appeal to you. Now or later, we have, uh, oh gosh, thousands and thousands of articles. You will always find something of interest there to you. So this past couple of weeks, we published an article on aspirin. Are you one of those who takes a baby aspirin or keeps aspirin in the house in case of a potential heart attack? This article might be of interest to you. Nursing home chains, what kind of care do they provide? Considering breast cancer surgery for elderly patients, is it the best option? You might want to take a read of that. Dutch Dementia Care, you know, they are always on the cutting edge. And uh, there they go again. Famous Fingers and Prostate Care. What's a famous finger and what does it have to do? It gives you the willies, doesn't it? But it's an interesting article. Ageism, CBD oil, fall cleanup tips, flu vaccines, and a whole lot more you will find, as I said, at theoldish.com. Now let me get to... Let me get to my trip because it was so much fun. It's always relaxing to get away and um, turn your attention to something else. Just as nice to come back home and get into routine. But this particular trip to Europe, you know, I saw places. I've been. I was in France and I've been to France before. I was the the entire time. I was in the south of France in the Dordogne and then a couple of hours from Toulouse. But I couldn't help but look at the lifestyle that the people live there and compare it to the conversations that you and I have here on a weekly basis about how we live our lives and how to stay healthy. It was ever so interesting. So let me, let me bring forward some of the things that I saw and put it into a bit of context for you. Those of you who have been to Europe and um, can comment on any of this, please do. Pop it in the comments and we will see it right here live as we move forward. Um, for those of you who are watching this uh, later, feel free to put your comments in later. We'll still see them. So my brother and his wife live in Europe. They live in a very, very small village in the Dordogne. They've lived there for many years. My sister-in-law is Dutch. My brother, of course, is Canadian. Um, they don't like the weather in Canada, and they don't like the weather in Holland. So they have chosen to retire to the south of France, and the Dordogne is their chosen place. So the Dordogne is um, not quite as touristy as some, you know, Bordeaux, Provence, those are places where people tend to think of going when they go to the south of France, not so much the Dordogne, um, but it is, it is absolutely lovely. Uh, from there, I, I spent four days with my brother and his wife, and then I went about two hours outside of Toulouse and joined a group of people for a chef's tour. It was wonderful. We ate a lot, drank a lot of really nice wines, walked a lot, uh, I had my Apple Watch with me, and uh, we, we all took a look at my statistics at the end of each day, because if I walked however many steps, so did everybody else in the group, and we were routinely walking 10, 12, 14,000 steps a day. That's why my pants still fit when I came home, despite all of the great food that we ate. Along the way, whether I was with my brother or on the chef's tour, we met a lot of expats. A lot. They were largely from the UK, there were some from Holland, and there were some from the United States. But in each case, we asked them, someone on the group would inevitably ask, why are you here? What brought you here to this place? 100% of the time, they said, lifestyle. There was a lifestyle in the, the south of France, in the places where they had chosen to be, that they just simply couldn't get at home. 
that's really what got me thinking about the conversations that you and I have. And it did occur to me along the way that for those of you who are retired, there's not a reason in the world why you couldn't adopt and emulate some of the, the lifestyles that they have in Europe. You might not choose to go and live in Europe. I know that, I, that in a heartbeat, I would probably pack up and live there, except that my children are here. So I choose to visit. That's fine. So the prevailing attitude is that they work to live. They don't live to work. That sounds a little bit easier said than done, I think. You know, in Europe, it's routine to start with six weeks vacation on a new job. And I know that in France, this may be the case in other countries too, but in France, it is illegal to work overtime. Not allowed. So that's a difference. You know, they, the use of electronics, you know, we're, we're pretty married to our electronics. And, and yes, they use them there. Everybody has a cell phone and everybody's on it from time to time, but they aren't glued to it the same way. And they don't seem to be glued to their televisions the way that we are glued to our televisions. And yet they know what's going on in the world. So however they choose to do it, it, it is working for them. And the value that they place on their families and their lifestyle is really evident, very evident. The lifestyle is definitely much more simple. They have fewer things. Their houses are smaller. But the things that they do have are useful and serve a purpose. That's very interesting because when I came home and I looked around at, at my house, my children are gone now, and I look around at the space that I have, and it would probably fit a, two or three families, really. I mean, and I don't, I don't have that large a house for Canadian standards or American standards, but the houses there are just smaller, more contained, more purpose-driven in terms of how they use their space. Wardrobe is something that, of course, I'm a girl, and that caught my attention. The wardrobes are so much smaller. They have fewer pieces. They really have the, uh, the mix and match thing down to a science. One of the most interesting things that was said to me while I was there was that it is not uncommon to spend as much to have a given item tailored as it was to purchase the item to begin with. So they have fewer items, but they fit like a glove. The styling is far more classic. So I didn't see trendy clothing there, other than on tourists, other tourists who were there. But on the people who actually live there, it was very classic clothing, very classic. So fewer pieces, they are far better cared for, they are worn more often, and the mixing and matching um, routine is much better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean out my closet. I, I swear I'm going to clean out my closet because I have far too many clothes that I just don't wear. And that's just all there is to it. Disposability is far less of a thing there as I talk about disposing of clothing, but we have, we have some, um, uh, some things coming up where people can come in and, and buy, you donate clothing to these rummage sales and the rummage sale proceeds go to the local hospital. So that's, it's all good. I'm gonna clean out my closet. I'm gonna make a nice donation of clothing to the, uh, the hospital rummage sale and, and I'm gonna feel much better and my closet's gonna breathe, so that's, that's good. Food, there is a lot of market shopping. So these villages are, are very small and there are markets. Every village has their day and you can go into a given village and everybody knows the market is here on Wednesday and it's there on Monday and it's there on Saturday. And it's the same vendors, they go around from village to village and they set up their markets and they do their thing. Um, it's, it's ever so interesting. Um, I bought, I bought a scarf and I bought a dress at a market because that's what you do. It, that's just how people shop. Um, what is in the market and what is in the stores in terms of fresh produce is what's being grown now. And if it's not being grown now, they don't bring it in. They don't bring it in from 
you know, Mexico or China or wherever they would bring it in from. It's just simply not available. So the food is fresh and it's in season. It's what's there now. That's very different. You know, when we, I, I was at our local grocery store this morning and it's, it's huge and it's what I'm used to. And they've got everything in season or out of season. If, it, if it's out of season here, well, it's in the frozen section and it's brought in from wherever, or it is in the fresh section, but it's, it's still, it's brought in. Very different attitude about um, shopping. The, the food is so fresh. The meals are prepared with a great deal of care and really presented as a gift. Every meal that we were served, whether it was in my brother's home or out at a restaurant on the chef's tour, the presentation was exquisite and the attitude seems to be that we, we eat with our eyes. I very seldom take the time to garnish my meals. Every single meal I ate in France, regardless of where I ate it, was garnished. I know that seems like a small thing and it's a very simple thing, but it's a meaningful thing and it shows the pride they take in what they produce. We can do that here. It's just slowing down and taking the time, isn't it? It really is. The style of eating is very Mediterranean and we talk about that here all the time. The Mediterranean, Mediterranean style of eating is supposed to be the healthiest style for us, particularly as we age. Yes, wine is allowed. And wine was consumed, not vast quantities, but there's wine with lunch and there's wine with dinner. Again, not a lot of it. Wouldn't sit and go through a bottle of person, but it's sipped as you chat, you chat over your day, you chat with people about their lives. It, it's just a much more relaxed way of eating. You know, I, I'm reminded of when my kids were little and we'd sit down at a meal and I, I may have taken an hour to prepare it, but it would be wolfed down in 10 minutes so that we could get on to, you know, the, the practice that one child had to go through or the homework that another child had to do. It's not like that over there. Not that I saw. Some of you may have a different experience, but it, it certainly wasn't like that. There is certainly an appreciation of what they eat and drink. Um, and you don't get everything in one grocery store, by the way, either. You, you get some things at this grocery store. You get your fruits and vegetables from the market, and you get your bread from the, the other store. And, and by the way, if you get there too late in the morning, it's gone. It's just gone. And yes, I ate more than one croissant, and it was delicious. And they don't make them that way here. It was so good. Um, exercise seems so much easier there. Like I said, we walked 10, 12, 14,000 steps a day. Now, yes, we were on a tour, but there is a lot more just walking around that people seem to do. They're walking around the market. They live in small villages, so they, they don't get in their cars to walk 600 feet to go to the post office. They walk. A lot of people here get in their cars to go to the post office. We don't do, they don't do that there. They just don't. But you know, one of the, one of the interesting things is that social isolation seems that it would be far less of a problem there than it is here. The homes are built very close together, very close to the street, as in right on the street. So it's very difficult to go by a house and not hear other people or see other people. People are out and about going to the markets. People are out and about going to the post office or going about their daily lives. It seems like it would be far more difficult to be isolated there. And I don't believe that they are. As I said, healthy eating is pretty much the standard because everything is fresh and in season. Don't get me wrong, Europe isn't perfect. The social taxes are very high. The bureaucracies are very dense. And there are some governments in some countries that are whispered to be not quite on the up and up. I haven't heard that whispered about France, but the lifestyle is, is interesting and, and not without its challenges. We have our challenges here. The French healthcare system is pretty darn good from all accounts. In fact, 
excellent is a word that I heard from a lot of people. So to sum it up, they are doing more with less. Their pace is much more relaxed. Their diet is extremely healthy. And exercise seems just to be a part of their day. I saw people doing this kind of stuff as a matter of course. And it's, it's the kind of stuff we talk to you about here uh, every single week. And we write about in our articles as well. There's just this healthy style of living. They say it takes three weeks to develop a new habit. And I really, I really feel that if we were to, as a society, and particularly the retired parts of our society, adopt some of these healthy European traits, we could be a lot healthier, a lot quicker. But I think it starts with the relaxed attitude. I really do. Um, just relaxing about your day, not rushing through a meal, not rushing through a conversation, appreciating people, appreciating your family, and taking the time to make time for the things in your life that you value, not putting it off to tomorrow. I think that's very important. And I'm certainly going to try to do better in, in those areas, starting with cleaning my closets for sure. Anyway, folks, that is what I have for you this week on the Oldish Live. I do hope you will join us next week, Wednesday, 12 noon. As I said in the meanwhile, please join us on whatever social platform gets you excited, whether it's Instagram or uh, Twitter or Facebook. You're joining us here on Facebook, so hopefully you are paying attention to Facebook. And I will see you back here next Wednesday, 12 noon Eastern Time. Until then, take care of one another, and please do remember that it takes a village to age a senior.